This week on the Stogie Geeks, we've got none other than Jack Taranio on the lines via Skype. In our debonair ideal segment, we're going to talk about interesting and unique cigar names, which are harder and harder to come by these days. In our Stogies of the Week, we'll talk about everything from Fight Chuck Norris to Boxworthy to Split a Box with a Friend, all that and more, so stay tuned. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the Stogie Geek Show! If you created the Aging Room Small Batch Cigar Line, the highest rated boutique cigar brand of our times, what would you do next? Well, if you're Raphael Nodell from Boutique Blend Cigars, you would combine your three most important passions of your life, Cuba, music, and cigars, and create a new classic, La Boheme Cigars. La Boheme is Raphael's take on the golden age of Cuban cigars. La Boheme is a sophisticated blend of extra aged and hard to find tobaccos from the Dominican Republic. A medium bodied cigar, rich in flavors reminiscent of the island he left 35 years ago in a small boat with his family. Why wait for the embargo to be lifted? Smoke La Boheme today. Blending is in our DNA. Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest growing boutique cigar companies, providing smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of perfect balance and the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Palayo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to introduce a series of cigars that offer the same quality, construction, and detail which he perfected while in Cuba. Brands include the Ultra Premium Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigar Series, Azan Cigars, Naya, and Baracoa. Duran Cigars uses a seed to humidor approach as all tobacco is grown on their farms and rolled in their factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. Rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure the progressive flavor in each cigar. Duran Cigars invites you to make their premium your standard. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. The founder of Defiant Whiskey, Tim Ferriss, built the distillery, the company, and the brand organically in the mountains of western North Carolina, in between deep sea commercial diving jobs. Tim will now explain a little bit about the spirit behind Defiant Whiskey. These guys are masters, they're, they're artisans. I wanted to learn how to do that. I wanted to learn how to make a spirit that people tasted and was like, oh my God, that's incredible. You taste that quality, you taste that drive, you taste that passion. The minute they take a sip, the conversation's over and they just go in, that's incredible. Welcome, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian. Very excited to be here this evening. We have a fantastic show for you, as always. And on the lines via Skype, and actually, like, almost right here in studio, is Mr. Will Cooper. Welcome, Will. Hey, greetings, Paul. We, we're going to have a really, we're going to have a lot of cigars we're giving away tonight. That's, all, that's excellent. Our listeners very much yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, I'll highlight, I'll just give a quick recap. I mean, we're going to give our normal prize pack away at the end of the show. I'm going to be raffling off a special Davidoff Escurio cocktail set and sampler, which we'll talk about a little later, which you actually have one of those now, Paul. We do. Yep. It's yep. in our, our our shaker collection. In the, yep. in the We actually have a collection of shakers. Yep. Uh, well, you'll see the, the bar area. Uh, we're in our expanded studio space right now which is still uh, in a segment we recorded earlier for a different show. Uh, one of the guys helping us out doing some construction type work uh, actually walked on camera, which is pretty hilarious. Actually, I thought it was funny. I told him to leave it because we're still, I mean, that's how like new or expanded space is here. But we got a full bar area uh, that you'll see on camera for different segments. We've got a news desk set. Uh, and we've got this set, which kind of changes around. Uh, you can see we've added some more TV screens uh, to this set, and you can actually see Will. Now, Will, you can't see it yet. That's one of the things that we're still working on the technical difficulties with. Um, but uh, you look great up there on your camera. I can actually see your camera angle might be a little tilted to the left, or you're not perfectly centered. But yeah, they, they, 
Yeah, just be, all right. Yeah, you well, all right, we'll fix. It. Okay. Well, wait, well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I tell you, we I'm really proud of all the work that everyone's done up there. Um, we are now the multi-camera, multi-set uh, cigar podcast. I think we're the only one who can make that claim now. So it's great work. It's really great work that's going on there. Yeah, it, wait till you see the video of what I'm talking about because people can actually see you and I in the same shot. Uh, and we've, we've never been able to really do that before now. Yeah, I mean, we're all about, I mean, we, we're all about the, being a stogie geek in more than one ways here. So Absolutely. It's, it's, I'm, real, I'm, I'm real excited, and, you know, we have our anniversary show. I'll be up there, and I can't wait to see it, and we'll talk more about that. Yes, absolutely. Well, why don't you introduce our, our special guest for this evening? Yeah, and I don't want to forget, we'll be doing a giveaway from this guest as well. Mm. So uh, we have um, our, our old friend, and it seems like that every time we are either closing up a studio or opening up a studio, I think Jack Tarano of Duran Cigars somehow pops in. Jack, Will Cooper, and Paul Acidorian, how are you doing tonight? How are you guys? How's everything going? Going really well, Jack. Going great, going great. I mean, and and I know we uh, we had to do a couple of scheduling changes, and we really appreciate you coming on um, and being a part of the show tonight. Especially when we know this is your evening and you're at home, so thank you very much. Yeah, anytime, guys. I love being on the show and uh, I love hanging out with you guys. So a- anytime, I'm uh, I'm available at what five minutes notice. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. So Jack, what are you smoking? I'm in the house. If I smoke something here, I get thrown out of the house. So uh, <laughs> you get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Before the show, my wife's just off a camera shot over here. So <laughs> if uh, <laughs> if if I were to to light this uh, beautiful Naya F8, I would uh, get in trouble. So <laughs> now I'm smoking the regular, uh, uh, not the F8, but the regular Naya line. The classic. Yeah, J- Jack, classic. tell us a little bit about, about that blend. I know you have before, but now I'm intrigued because I, I, I'm smoking it for the first time, actually. I don't think I've smoked from the, the, anything from the Nea Classic. Well, the Classic is, is, uh, is just a milder version of the F8. It has a, uh, doesn't have the, the Lijero kick that, that we put in the, uh, in the F8. Uh, same great blend, uh, a lot of great flavor, a lot of complexity. Um, but it just doesn't have that. I mean, listen, the F8 doesn't knock you on your ass. It's not that type of cigar, but it's just very powerful in strength and very, uh, very flavorful throughout. Nice. Yeah, it's very good. I'm enjoying it very much so far. Yeah. Yeah, happy yeah. to hear that. I'm actually smoking the, and this, was, this one's actually really now going right to the top of the portfolio with Duran, which has got some great stuff. But this, this uh, Maduro Natural, it just gets better and better and better every time I smoke it. It just like I enjoy it more and more. It is. It, it quickly became my favorite of a uh, portfolio, and and has remained that way. Uh, the Nea Fade is creeping up on it, but that 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 the Maduro Natural, I loved it the first time, and I still it's uh it's one of my go to sticks. I it's a little, it. yeah. It's a little bolder, Jack. Than I would yeah. say. Yeah, it's one of the more bold, but not something that's going to knock you on your butt and not overpower you. But it's got a little more boldness to it than than you know, a lot a lot of the others. But full of flavor, just like the other cigars. Yeah, yeah. Jack, now speaking of strength wise with cigars, what what seems to be the trend? And there are certain regions where you know, your stronger, more bolder cigars do well, as opposed to some of your medium or milder cigars. Uh, absolutely. Um... It, it, it not only region store by store. I mean, you could have a couple of stores in the uh, in the same uh, in the same city, mm-hmm. and one of them can't give away a strong cigar, and the other is just living off of selling stronger cigars. It's a it's a weird uh, dynamic that's going on with that. Yeah, I've always been fascinated by that. I mean, the studio, you know, as you know, is right next door to a cigar lounge, and also down the street, like. A little over a mile away is another uh, cigar shop, and the the cigars that sell in one like won't sell in the other one, and then you go to the next city over, and their portfolio is completely different, and and they're not far you know from here either. So I, I've always just been kind of baffled as to how that happens. Yeah, it's just, I haven't figured it out yet. I'd love to. I think that's uh, whoever can figure that out will have the secret to the cigar industry. Yeah, uh-huh. uh, like how do you know what's gonna sell at a at a shop? You the know, the, I, I, the I, shop I've owners gone. probably tell you though when they place their order, right? They they probably know their clientele pretty well, and they're like, "Well, you know, send Absolutely. me." 
absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we, we rely on that, and and you know, so uh, even even with uh, sizes, um, mm. you know, some stores are desperate for six sixties, even seven seventies, and then you have others that they can't give those away. Right. So, you know, you got you got a lot of stores are now jumping on the Lancero uh, train. A lot of stores like Lancero's a year ago. Wow, you'd be hard pressed to find one in most stores. Do you think the Lancero trend is continuing? You think more and more people are smoking Lanceros than before? God, I hope so because we're putting one out. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> That's your that first. That would be your first I hope one, that right? Trend doesn't end. Yeah. So, Jack, that would be your first one, right? That'll be our first Lancero. It's uh, it's the Roberto Duran, uh, the the signature uh, cigar. His uh, his signature cigar. We're gonna we created a Lancero for it. It's uh, I actually have one somewhere in here, but re really really nice. Can I get one? Is that one. is that a limited cigar, Jack? No, it won't be. It won't be limited. It it, it uh, it'll be full production and it should be out probably a month or so. Nice. That's awesome. Hmm. It, and now, do we also still see the trend to the larger ring gauges, 58 ring gauge and above? Uh, again, some areas yes, some areas mm -hmm. no. I was I visited a couple of shops today, and both shops were like I was. They they like the Nea F8, which is the the blend that's really taking off for us for for many reasons. I, I, it's a it's a great cigar. It's got a great price point, and uh, and uh, we're doing a lot of marketing behind it. We created these real cool Zycar XI1 cutters with the uh, Nea F8 logo and the Duran logo on it. I don't know if you can see that. So uh, we're, we're doing a big push. This is the, uh, the Lancero. Nice. What's the ring gauge on that Lancero? Uh, 38. Okay. Yeah. I want to say. Don't hold me to that, but I'm pretty sure it is. That's... That's, uh, oh, that looks that looks real nice with the blue, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, and I'm sorry, Chuck. Which blend is that Lancero based off of? The, the, the Roberto Duran Premium, the the okay. signature line. Okay. Um, yeah, we 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 made it in three or four, a couple of the Azan lines and uh, the Nea line, and it just it really came together well in the signature line. So uh, that's the one we went with uh, for now. So. Very cool, Jack. What else, what else have you smoked recently that has really uh, kind of caught your interest? Uh, I mean, outside of your own lines, have you have you been sampling? I know the show wasn't too too long ago, and we've all kind of. I've certainly have done my fair share of sampling a lot more since the show happened. Have you smoked anything that's really stood out for you? You know, uh, um, I kind of one of the cool things about the show and any multi vendor event I do is that. I get to collect cigars from everybody and kind of see mm. what they're going and and what the trends are and 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 what the flavor profiles are and I I love sitting in my backyard at night and smoking uh smoking other manufacturers cigars and and I I took me a couple of uh, about a month and a half to go through what I wanted to go through from the show and uh and somewhere on Facebook I put my top 10 uh my top 10 hits and and there was no surprise cuz I was a big fan of Las Calaveras in 2014, that, yeah. that Lampiosa is still one of my favorites. I mean, that is a to me that that's a really great cigar. And Skip Martin at Roma Craft is putting out some really good, albeit very strong cigars. Mm -hmm. um, was it was the Neanderthal on your list? Is that I smoked it and knocked me out. <laughs> oh, it's a powerhouse. That is a powerhouse it, cigar. It's a powerhouse. It really I think Skip might be putting a little weed in those things or something. Man. <laughs> it I, makes I, you I, dizzy, right? <laughs> I was hallucinating. In the back. <laughs> I saw a possum. But I think <laughs> Jack, what's your what's your favorite beverage to pair with uh, cigars? I'm a beer guy. I'm, okay. I'm a beer guy. So so uh, actually, uh, the funny thing is that I kept seeing over and over and over on Facebook this my not my father's root beer, and yeah. everybody going crazy for this stuff and I couldn't find it anywhere and I was finally up in Harrisburg Pennsylvania and uh, and they had it there at cigars and more and uh, and I bought some just to have to the event to give out to the guys and I drank it for the first time and I it was kind of like I was gonna be you watch I'm gonna be the one guy that thinks this stuff sucks and it was actually pretty damn good nice I heard it uh, pretty much tastes like root beer is that pretty much pretty much but gives you a quick little buzz mm. you know Interesting. So it was, uh, it was interesting, paired well with uh, our Azan Maduro, and uh, but but I'm I'm not a whiskey guy. 
Mm -hmm. I have a cat going crazy here. Uh, I'm not a whiskey guy, but uh, but yeah, I mostly uh, mostly drink it with beers. What do you like? Uh, what style beer do you like to have with your cigars? You know, you all know, kinds I'm, or? I'm a Belgian. Yeah. Uh, Okay. So uh, I don't like anything really, really dark. I don't like the German room temperature stuff. I don't mm -hmm. like. A, um, I'm more of a Stella. I like some Japanese beers. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think uh, in, in the world of pairing cigars with with drinks, I'm 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 definitely the wrong person to ask. I'm not a big drinker. <laughs> well, your Belgian beers, I think, are really awesome. Just on their own. I mean, the when we talk, it's kind of like the cigars, right? Like when it's, the number one things I look for in a cigar is a lot of flavor. Your Belgian mm -hmm. beers have just this like yep. unbelievable flavor, uh, and it goes across a lot of different style of Belgian beer. But they're also kind of deceptive too, because you can have a really light looking Belgian beer, but have it be very, very full flavor. That you know, like you yeah, said, Jack. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And, and that's what I look for in a cigar too. So. You bring up uh, an, an excellent point. So, uh, you, were you were out in uh, Pennsylvania doing some events? I'm sorry. Were you out in Pennsylvania doing events? Uh, yeah, you know, we were out visiting shops. I was out there with our national sales director uh, Miguel Shodell, and uh, Roberto came along, and we visited a lot of uh, retailers, and uh, uh, you know, it was like a PR trip visiting yeah. uh, visiting some big, small, medium accounts, and uh, and then it all culminated with a with an event in Harrisburg uh, mm -hmm. at Cigars and More. Uh, with Nepalm over there with Nick, and uh, and it was a lot of fun. It was a, a really fun event. It's the first time Miguel, Roberto, and I are at the same event, so you know we had a good time, a lot of laughs, and and a lot of people got to and, you know try the cigars that hadn't hadn't tried them before. So it's really you know, I, I don't claim to be a marketing genius, but one of the things I've learned about the cigar industry over the years uh, is that going out to the stores, whether you're doing an event or not, is extremely important. Absolutely. From your perspective, Jack, what, what's the, you know, why is that so important? Like when you go do events, what is the, the, the most important things of what you want to accomplish when you go do an event or visit a store? Well, listen, you, you, you're, you're, you're accomplishing many things. One is uh, obviously you're helping the retailer move, move product. And uh, mm -hmm. retailers absolutely love that. And, uh, and um, you're connecting with consumers. You're connecting with uh, workers in a store. Um, you know, you're connecting with their fan base, and and people that hang out at stores are very receptive to those things, and 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 like to take advantage of of uh, you know. In reality, you can get great deals. I, I tell this this to people a lot. You know, a lot of these people that live by cigar bid and and these things just hungry for that deal and hungry for that deal. You know, don't overlook events because at events you're going to get better deals than you do online. You know. When push comes to shove, I know some manufacturers are the stuff they're giving away for a box of cigars is insane. You can't get that online, and uh, and when when you you break it down, you know if you're you're, you're savvy enough and you you start looking in, into events, you can you can really build a nice humidor and uh, and sample a lot of great cigars. I really so, love the experience that I get from an event, and I think it. You know, for me as a reviewer, I have to be careful that it doesn't taint my opinions too much. But for me, it's very, uh, it's an awesome experience because I get to oftentimes meet the people who either work for the company or sometimes the person that blended that cigar at the event. Tell me about the event. You learn a little bit about the people that work for the company, you know, the people, uh, the story behind the people who started the company and are blending the cigars. And I always, I always end up buying a box and... I end up finding something that I really like out of their line, and I end up buying the box and taking advantage of those deals that you say, Jack. And I often, oftentimes, it kind of taints my opinion. Like I have this more of a personal relationship with the brand and with those cigars than I would with other manufacturers who I haven't done an event with. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, the the other cool thing is, I think you know, we're we're starting to get Roberto out a little bit more, and a lot of people, where a lot of people have gotten. Um, a good chance to meet me and, and Miguel and, and some of the other reps, Carol Lee in Texas. Um, a lot of people haven't, haven't uh, I saw a post yesterday, uh, Steve Saka posed a question on Facebook about, uh, about what cigar brand names do you like and don't like and somebody actually put that they didn't like Roberto Duran simply because they keep thinking it's the boxer and it's not. And Steve Saka's <laughs> reply was, I thought it was the boxer. <laughs> so, so, uh, 
So it's, you know, he, he's getting a chance to get out there and he's got interesting stories and, and, and he's, uh, you know, it, it was kind of funny. Uh, it, it, at the end of the uh, event in Harrisburg, Roberto was holding court uh, telling, telling jokes and he had everybody in stitches. I didn't know he had that, that funny bone in him, but it was, uh, it was quite the experience. And uh, we had a really good time and a lot of laughs and a lot of people really got to bond with him. And, and, and while it's a lot of fun to bond with me or Miguel or, you know, or, or Carol Lee or, or some of our other people, you know, consumers really need to meet the guy behind the brand. Mm. And, um, and Roberto does a lot of traveling and hasn't been able to, to be at events, but I think he's, 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 he's been able to get out more and more. So it's, uh, it's cool for us to be out there with him. Mm. That's yeah, great. I've had the pleasure of meeting Roberto uh, a few times, and I will concur with everything Jack said. Mm. Yep, yep, absolutely. Jack, I want to ask you a little bit of a controversial question. I don't know if it's that controversial, but um, you're, you're an honest guy. You've been on the show quite a bit. How do you balance uh, selling to brick and mortar and selling to online? I mean, it, do, is the company? Do you mean do you do you have certain brands that you sell online, or do you kind of uh, you know kind of mix and match? And then, how do you feel about retailers who also sell online? Um, it's it's a tough balance. We never we never. I think we had lost that focus with Taranio mm -hmm. and uh, I know some manufacturers are really uh, really being discounted heavily online and you you gotta be real careful because to me the lifeblood of this industry is is the brick and mortar and um, it's great to be able to sit at home and I realize a lot of people in the country are, aren't even close to a brick and mortar right. so so they, they have to live by the internet and they have their own little man cave and and, and that's fantastic um, but the brick and mortars are the experience in a brick and mortar is just so unique, and it's uh, uh, the amazing thing about a brick and mortar is that any everyday Joe can walk into this place, and everybody in there will stand up and and and, and greet this guy. I've, I've never been in an industry that friendly and that you know quickly. That you everybody bonds over that that one cigar, that 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 one experience, and uh, and you got to be very careful and and. At Duran, we're, 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 we got a 10% price protection across the board. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, where our brands um, are online and, and will be online, you, you'll never see them at, you know, 85% off or 60% off. Or we, we, we don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot with, with brick and mortars. Um, we, we, we've been very careful, and Roberto's been very careful about that. And, and, and it really helps us on the sales side because uh you know and so many times at Taranio we would get calls you know listen the cigar is these this this online shop is selling it almost at what I'm getting at wholesale right and and you really have no no answer for that so you got to be really really careful i mean listen deals are out there um we do our best to keep that 10% but but like i told you at a brick and mortar at an event to me, you're going to get a better deal. I mean, listen, we, we just created these, uh, like I showed you, these these cutters. These are $60 Zycar XI1 uh, cutters. And uh, you, you get those for a box, a box of Nea F8. That's a, what, $120, $130 box. You're going to get a $60 cutter. Um, you can't get that online. You know, you, you can only get that at the brick and mortars. So, uh so, so definitely, while I, I, I certainly don't want anybody to stop ordering online, support your local brick and mortar. If you got one near you, support them because uh, they are the lifeblood of this industry. Yeah, and, you know, I, there's pluses to, to both of them, right? I think, you know, people who are in search of a deal, I would advise them that if you do have a brick and mortar close to you, like you said, Jack, there are ways to get a deal from your local brick and mortar. Um, the positive side for me on the brick and mortar side is that relationship with your tobacconist, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something you don't get when you shop online. Um, and certainly, I think the, even for all those of us that I'm not always looking for a deal online, sometimes I'm just looking to try something that I can't get locally. And that's, I think that's perfectly fine uh, to go try something uh, and have that conversation with your brick and mortar. Say, hey, I tried this and I really liked it. And I've had success with my local brick and mortar. It's going, yeah, you know what? I'm going to bring that in. I may even give them one. And they're like, wow, I'm going to bring that in. So I think it's important to maintain that relationship. If you do have a brick and mortar uh, near you to maintain that relationship, and like you said, Jack, this industry is amazing. I, I was talking to some of my friends uh, in the computer security who are also into cigars. 
I said, you know, I said, this guy, you know, Dave Garofalo, I said, I stopped in the shop, he wasn't there, and he sent me a note with some cigars and said, sorry for, you know, I couldn't be here kind of thing. And they're like, that's, that's so awesome to be in an industry like that where things like that happen, right? And that's just an example of a lot of things that happen in the cigar industry about, you know, the friendships that we make, so. Yeah, it's yeah, I saw, cool. like, I saw a guy post on, uh, on Facebook, I think he sent a, a message to, to John Huber that, that he had missed an event and he's sorry he missed it. He was a big fan of Crown Heads and the guy didn't ask for anything, didn't want anything, just sent a note letting John know and the next thing you know he had this little sampler with a baseball cap and he put a whole picture of it and a, and a personal note from John Huber thanking him for the support. You know, it's a, it's a very cool industry and, and, and manufacturers are, are, are a lot of boutique. I will say that the mm -hmm. boutique manufacturers are very appreciative of uh, hearing feedback and 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 getting to talk to all the consumers. So, do you do you meet a lot of consumers, and do you keep a certain percentage of them kind of like on your short list as advisors? I notice a lot of people, the manufacturers that travel around like that and do events, they'll kind of have like their. Uh, they're super users, so to speak, or super fanboys or, or gals, and they're the ones they kind of will develop an even deeper relationship with and get a lot of good feedback from. Do you guys do that uh, as well? Absolutely. I mean, we had a whole a whole horde of those guys at Taranio, and mm. we're starting to build that now with Duran. Um, as our as our product is available in more and more stores, you'll get more and more of that uh, fan base. But I got a lot of them that. On a regular basis, um, communicate with me through Facebook. Yeah, and uh, and and really give me great feedback and 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 put up great pictures and and, and it's it's greatly appreciated. That's excellent. Yep. Will, did you have some, uh, things that you wanted to talk about? Yeah. So, Jack, I'm going to hit you with another controversial one. As long as we hit, Paul did, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get mine in. So, it's about a year ago right now. Um, where you were part of probably a very big cigar story last year in that um, the brands of your old company, Taranio Family Cigars, was sold to General. Um, and a year's passed right now. And obviously, you know, you've moved on. Um, you know, a lot of folks have moved. A lot of folks from the Taranio team have actually moved well. But I kind of wanted to see if you wanted to reflect back now that it's been a year and if you have anything you want to say on that. Um, well, I'll tell you, it, it, it is it my travels around the country. It, it, you know, now a year a year into this thing, it's uh, it's kind of sad to see the the state of what Taranio is, and and it's it's sad that it's a dying it's a dying brand. I mean, I don't know what plans General has for it. I don't know if they're going to roll out some hundred year anniversary, but but uh, uh, none of it makes sense to me. Um, it's just really sad to keep seeing it in the bargain basement, uh, bargain bargain section, and 50% off. And store owners are very very happy to see me, and very quick to tell me they'll never carry a Toronto cigar again. And and um, it's just very very sad to see that. I mean that that was something that was a uh, you know a part of my family for 98 years. And uh, and I'm not sure uh, if generals generals going to roll out this 100 year anniversary. I don't, I'm not sure what that 100 year anniversary is going to be because uh, in truth there is no 100 year old company. It was 100 years or it would have been 100 years of a Taranio at the helm and Taranio's working in that company from my grandfather Santiago to my dad and his brothers to Charlie's dad to Charlie to myself to Carlos Yaka to, to my two other stepbrothers. There was always it was it was going to be a hundred-year anniversary of a Taranio in the industry, and um, and I'll be honest with you, this is year ninety-nine, and the only the only Taranio, blood Taranio, uh, in this industry is is me, and I don't work for that company, so mm -hmm. I don't know where where they're going to come up with a hundred-year anniversary of what. I mean, the, 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 there's there's there's. I mean, I could talk about this for all night long, but there's <laughs> there's a uh, there's. A bunch of different companies involved. There's Torano and Company, Torano Compañía, you know, Carlos Torano, Torano Family Cigars. There was a, a lot of different things that that our family did, from growers to manufacturers to makers of our own cigars to distributors. Uh, but there, there isn't. It's not like it's not like Torano Family Cigars existed in 1916. You know, it was a Torano beginning in the growing industry. 
and it was first generation. Second generation was my dad, Charlie's granddad. Third generation was myself, uh, Charlie's dad, fourth generation Charlie. And it was always a Taranio in there, in that mix. And, uh, and, and that's gone. I, I don't know how you... Uh, Jack, I don't know how um, you pre-Embargo, did your family work in Cuba as growers? Absolutely, absolutely. We had 17 farms, and we were, uh, we were uh, growers uh, in Cuba up until the revolution, and then, uh, and then we lost all 17 farms. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we came, and uh, my, my dad went to Nicaragua. Um, Carlos Taranio, Charlie's granddad, went to the Dominican Republic and, and built the name up again. And uh, um, Charlie's granddad died in 70. My dad passed away in 74. Um, and then that brought in my two half-brothers mm -hmm. into the company. And they brought in Charlie's dad into the company. Uh, I was 13 at the time, so cigars were certainly mm -hmm. not a part of my life. Uh, my dad didn't, if my dad would have lived into my 20s, this would have probably been my calling my entire life. But since I was so young, there was that separation. Mm -hmm. and, and again, um, my two half-brothers quickly, you know, saw that at that time it was a dying industry. It wasn't a profitable industry. And, and it took Charlie's dad to, to push us into the 90s. Um, through some very hard times. I mean, Charlie's dad could have easily given up, and, and he didn't, and he kept the Taranio name alive through those years and into the boom in the mid-'90s. So, um, Now, what, the history of the, uh, of the Durant family, is that, um, how does that story go? Uh, Roberto's, Roberto's wife, um, her grandfather... Uh, migrated from China to, uh, to Cuba and took the name Azan, and in 1928 opened a factory there, um, hmm. the Azan factory um, in, in Manicaragua, I think is the name of the city in Cuba. And that factory is still there today and still rolling cigars for, for the government, basically. Um, but the Azan brand kind of died out in 1959. Um, Roberto resurrected mm -hmm. that brand, uh, resurrected that brand uh, three years ago, um, and and that that was the start of our brand. Roberto, uh, you know, twenty plus years uh, in Cuba and in Hong Kong and in Canada with Habanos and British American Tobacco, and he has a rich history himself in this industry, and uh, a lot of interesting stories and and uh, and. You know, and he, he saw, Roberto saw an opportunity when, when Taranio sold to kind of bring some of us uh, who were orphaned on board. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, and things have grown well in the last year. I mean, uh, I think the sky's the limit with this brand. Jack, knowing some of the history uh, with Cuba and being in the cigar industry, what are your thoughts on the embargo being lifted? You know, I, I kind of... Uh, I hope it. I hope it is. I mean, I, I think. Uh, I think. I think what you're going to get is a lot of people realizing that uh, Cuban cigars aren't all that they're cut out to be, and that mm -hmm. you know the Americans have access to the greatest cigars in the world already. Mm -hmm. I think the cigars coming out of Nicaragua and a lot coming out of the DR are 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 head and shoulders above what's coming out of Cuba. They have no quality control. They have no 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 capacity to supply the biggest cigar consumer in the world or the United States with cigars so it's going to be a huge uh, uh, a huge problem and then you're going to you're going to be at the mercy uh, I think brick and mortars are going to be at the mercy of the generals and the altadises of the world really uh, in order to get those cigars um, mm. so I, I think I think there'll be a, a lot of excitement in our industry and, and people will smoke them but uh, you know how, how often are you going to spend 30 40 bucks on a cigar you know, and be dis and be disappointed. So, do you think if the embargo is lifted, um, people are going to come to the cigar industry? They're going to be like, "Oh, I want to try a Cuban cigar because they're illegal now." You th I I'm hopeful that there's a percentage of those people who are like, "Well, either that wasn't all it's cracked up to be, or you know, it was good enough." They're like, "Hey, I want to try some some different cigars too." Um, and I think again, it's up to the brick and mortars to steer those people to the cigars that we're all smoking today. 
uh, that we know Ooh, and love that don't come from Cuba, right? And, and, yeah, and it'll bring it'll bring a lot of uh, a lot of. Uh, of new consumers into our industry, yeah. I think the excitement and and the news of it will bring a lot of uh, a lot of uh, new consumers that will will get to enjoy and sample and and listen. If uh, more power to them, if they love Cuban cigars and that's what they want to smoke, more power to them. Uh, th there's enough to go around. This in, this is a great industry, and 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 the more people that, uh, that 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 discover it and enjoy it, the better it is for all of us. Mm. No, I, I definitely agree. But I think if the embargo is lifted, there's going to be some even worse quality control and d uh, supply issues, especially in the beginning. That's going to be a really rough time <laughs> yeah. for a lot of people, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, but hopefully, listen, hopefully it's not a one-way street. Hopefully it doesn't just get lifted and, and the market gets flooded with... with uh, with Cuban cigars, I mean, uh, I, I don't think they have, uh, they're capable or they have the resources of flooding this market with Cuban cigars, but, but hopefully it also will open up uh, an avenue for us to blend with Cuban tobacco and, yes. and maybe go back and grow. And, you know, it, it, th that would be ideal one day if, if we're able to, to grow our, you know, use the practices that, that we've, uh, developed in Nicaragua and in the Dominican Republic, and go back to Cuba and and and, and plant and grow in those and and process tobacco the way mm -hmm. the way it's processed nowadays, and 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 blend with Cuban tobacco. I think I think it'd be interesting to see some nice uh, Nicaraguan, Dominican, Cuban blends. Mm -hmm. that, that'd be really exciting. Absolutely. Uh, well, uh, closing questions for Jack. Um. So it's Jack. Uh, let's. I know you had a. You guys had a busy IPCPR. Um, what are some stuff now that you guys at the trade show kind of showcase that we can expect now to start seeing in the stores? Well, the Santo, the Santo Salomon will be shipping. I, I believe it was supposed to ship this week, but it should be hitting stores next week. That's the uh, limited release from our uh, our master roller Santo Cadenas, who's a legendary roller, one of the top, probably top three rollers in Cuba. He's currently on a tour in Canada, uh, promoting our brand and doing rolling exhibitions and uh, and stuff like that. And, and we hope to bring him to the United States soon to do the same. Um, we, we put out that limited. I think I think Will you smoked one recently? Oh, it's and, uh, great. Yeah, it's it's gotten some amazing reviews. It's 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 not a it's not a, an inexpensive cigar. I mean, uh, the MSRP it's a twenty five dollar cigar. But I'll tell you what, for special occasions. It is well worth it, and it comes in a beautiful hand-signed, hand-numbered uh, coffin in five-count boxes. It's just uh, uh, something that we're, I can't even tell you how proud we are of, of the way that came out and the job Santo did there. And, uh, and we're already in, you know, talking about developing uh, Santo's next release. And, and uh, you know, Santo was very famous in Cuba, probably his... He's known for the Salomon, so that was the first cigar that we put out was the Salomon, the Santo Salomon. So um, you know we're we're tinkering with other sizes and other things, and when Roberto heads back to Nicaragua, he'll he'll work on some new blends. But we're very excited about that. Um, some of the line extensions are are started shipping last week. Um, you know, Naya F8 got five new sizes, um, including one named after me, the Big Jack, the seven seven. <laughs> So those those are starting to ship and uh, and and yeah you know it's it's uh, it's never ending. I think the last time I was in the office with Roberto, he was already had the wheel spinning on new uh, new ideas, and new blends. So I'm I'm looking forward to uh, to, to 2016. It's going to be an exciting year for us. I think I think we've achieved a lot this first year. Um, we're we're in nearly 450 to 500 uh, uh, retailers. Um, Things have, have, have taken off uh, better than we anticipated, and, and the cigar is being very well received, and and, uh, and, I, and and we're all really looking forward to 2016, and, and the show in Vegas uh, should, should be a good one for us. Excellent. Jack, thanks for coming back on the show. It's always nice to have you uh, here on the Stogie Geeks. Anytime. I will be back in, uh, in Rhode Island. Uh, next month sometime, Paul. So hopefully you'll be in town. Yes. I Well, I, you know, I don't have any scheduled travel uh, other than one day in November. Are you going to be here in November? Uh, 
Or are we in October yet? We're, We're in, in October. October. Today's October 2nd. It, it might be the end of this month, actually. Okay. It's either Jack, I'm in, yeah, I'm yeah. in Rhode Island on uh, the 29th and 30th for our four-year anniversary show. So you know, if you're around, yeah, drop by. If you're by. around, drop by, for sure. 29th and 30th. Let me, let yeah. me look at my travel schedule, and I'll see if uh, I can plan the trip around that. Cause That'd I'm be just, awesome. Uh, yeah. just work on that. I'll crash one of your shows. That'd be great. You're always welcome. There. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much, man. And thanks, Jack. Appreciate it. With that, we're going to take a short break. Come back with Debonair Ideal segment for this show. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere.